Alright everybody, this is Hady Blue and this is my speedrun of Intelligent Cube for the PS1. The first stage sort of has its own strat, so I'll be going into that before I go into more general things about the game and what I'm doing. On this first stage, what I'm trying to do is get a green marker in the left two columns, a green marker in the right two columns, and to make sure they're not more than one row apart. And then this allows me to just capture all the cubes in the puzzle at once like that, and that's by far the easiest and quickest way of dealing with these early puzzles. If you get lucky, you can continue doing it for the entirety of the first stage, but I get quite bad luck and get quite a lot of puzzles with black cubes in them, which means I can't do that, but it's not cause for reset or anything, it's just slightly unlucky. Now here's the first mistake of the run, and it's a timing based one, I should have captured all of those like I have been doing. And yeah, I'll go into the, the timing issues later on as to why it's quite prevalent. And there's another one. So yeah, it's not the greatest of first stages, this was about 65 seconds, which is about average for me. And yeah, so if you don't know, then the main aim of this game is to capture all the non-black cubes by either using the single blue marker or by using the green bombs, which capture a 3x3 three three area. And if you do that, you get an extra row added to the stage. And yeah, it's a big boom and perfect voice, but we're playing for speed, not for points, so we will be doing that. And we'll be using the pretty much the speedrun strats of not getting perfects and making good use of the slack space. And what do I mean by making good use of the slack space? I mean not doing this, and uh, now, not doing that, and using it all in one puzzle. Now the slack space is basically, it means that each stage has more rows on it than you need to actually complete, even if you don't get any perfects. And in fact they all have enough rows that you can pretty much ignore the longest puzzle they hold, which removes the number of puzzles in that, which removes the number of rows in that puzzle from the stage. And basically you can do that and you still have rows left over that you can use to trade for not getting perfects. Which is what we do, so the stage always ends up at a sort of minimum size that you need to survive. And there's two main ways you can avoid the perfects. The first is to just not capture a cube you should do and let it roll off the end of the stage. And if you do that then it will add one to the block counter in the bottom right hand corner, it will turn one of the white squares red. And if that overflows, like for instance if I let four go here, instead of just a 3 in the block scale, then I'll lose a row at the stage. The other, row, the, other, the, other, the other way to not get a perfect is to capture just a black cube directly and that will immediately lose you a row off the end of the stage. So that's why I was mourning a bit earlier on about losing all my slot space on one puzzle since I captured three black cubes and the slot space on the second stage is three rows. So that's why I wasn't quite happy about that. So yeah, capturing a black cube also has the advantage of clearing the block scale so you can Instead of letting a cube roll off the end to not get a perfect, if it's full, then it's much faster to actually just capture a black cube, and you'll see me do that on one of the puzzles of the next stage. And that's faster than just letting it roll off the end, because if you capture a black cube, then you lose the roll straight away, whereas if you let the cubes roll off the end, you have to wait for the cubes to roll off the end, and then you have to wait for the stage collapsing animation to play, So, and it's much faster to just capture the black cube, so that's why I do that. So some of the things you might see me doing here, which I think why am I doing them, is I put a blue marker two in front of a cube that's coming up instead of right right after it, right you know right before it, and that's basically it. so I can minimise the number of times the puzzle has stopped because that's by far the thing that takes the longest in the game because the accelerating is quite quickly, the, the accelerating is quite quick and everything else is quite quick except for the fact that the duration that the puzzle stops when you capture a cube. So by putting it two in front I can capture more cubes in less stoppages, pretty much, so that's why I do that. And another thing you'll see me doing quite often, you might think, well why am I doing it, but I've already kind of mentioned it, it's the... Um, I completely ignore some of the puzzles, basically, well always like the first puzzle of, of the third wave, which you'll see in a minute. And here's me just capturing the black cube to lose a row quickly by far the quickest way. So yeah, here you're going to see me just completely ignore this puzzle and run into it. And that's the easiest way to lose rows off the stage. And so basically the way you... why you need to lose rows off the end of the stage is because it means the cubes later on have much less distance to travel to get to the end of the playfield. So it's quicker to... So basically they end up, they roll off quicker, and you deal with the puzzles quicker. And also since you can spare the space, it means you don't have to deal with one of the harder puzzles at the stage, yeah. since the longer puzzles are generally the harder ones. And the third wave and fourth wave usually have the longest puzzle, longest puzzles on every stage. Now I do that strat 
all the way up to stage 7 and that's when things get more serious so I stopped doing it then. But yeah, the, if you run into a puzzle like that, like I do on the third wave, and oh, these green puzzles like this, that, on, that have minimal black cubes, coming from now on, these are godsends, these are pretty much, this is the RNG being nice, and then if you get squashed like that, as you've seen plenty of times, it means the puzzle plays again, so yeah, that's quite advantageous. So if the puzzle plays again, that takes one puzzle out of the RNG's hands, and it means you already know what's coming up. So that's another reason why if you get squashed on the third wave, since that takes one of the longer puzzles out of the RNG's hands, and it means, yeah, like I said, we can we know what's coming up and we can deal with it. And yes, so basically getting squashed, yep, it loses your rows and it can, it repeats the puzzles, it only does that once, so if I get squashed after I've been squashed once, I don't get another again, I get, I just get a new puzzle like normal, and it doesn't, doesn't, go between waves so if I get squashed on the last puzzle of a wave then I don't get to see it again unless the RNG is nice and I get it again because it's perfectly possible you can get the same puzzle three times like that if the RNG would have just given you the same puzzle again anyway. So that's quite handy. Another thing you might see me do quite often is I run to the centre after I've, de I've dealt with a puzzle. Now that's mainly due to, mainly for the camera so I can get it centred and because this character who I'm playing as, Elliot, this is he's a default and he's the slowest, so if I'm standing in the centre then I have like less dis I have the same distance to cover to each side of the puzzle. And another thing uh, you saw on the well, yeah you saw you might not have recognised it because I didn't call it out then. On the first puzzle of the third wave of the second stage, then I ran between the cubes. It, but instead of getting squashed at the end getting like the same puzzle again, it didn't count as an a squash and that's because if you stand right on the grid lines like you can see in the like the division of the cubes here right in the middle on the floor if you stand in between the patterns well the the lines I'm not explaining this really badly. But if you stand on the lines of the put on the floor while the puzzle is rolling past you, if you get it right dead in the centre then it doesn't count it doesn't squash you because you go between the cubes. So that's what I'm basically always trying to do on the third wave because Getting squashed is nice, but not getting squashed is even nicer because then the black cubes don't count. Yeah, that's what I didn't mention earlier. If you get squashed, all the cubes that roll off the end of the stage count towards the plot scale instead of just the ones which you should have captured. So that's another nicer if you manage to get that bug. I got it once in this run and I didn't get. I don't get it again. There, there's another timing mistake. Uh, I didn't press X hard enough for the marker, and so I thought it was down, and it wasn't down. And also, the, when I tried to activate it, I just set a marker, and it didn't stop the cubes, and that's why I got squashed. So, yeah, I'm not really. I wasn't really happy with that. So this is why I perfect that one to get one of my rows back, and I think I perfect to the next one because I get a zigzag puzzle, and these ones are well, they're usually a bit of a pain to deal with, but. Here I ended up leaving one cube and I thought well I might as well just perfect it so that I can use that to avoid perfects later on. So there we are and you see me trying to stand in the centre here and his legs disappear if you stand sideways in the centre for some reason, don't know why that happens. So yeah that's pretty much all of the main mechanics you'll see me doing again and again. Like I said when I get to stage 7 I change things up a bit. Not much, but a little bit since I don't get squashed as much, or intentionally squashed as much. So yeah, talk talk about the puzzles now. There's each puzzle size has 200 puzzles that it can pick from, and the RNG pretty much decides which puzzle you get. Now the RNG it technically decides the puzzles the frame before the puzzle starts, but since the RNG is seeded at the start of the stage, just before the stage, like the fifth stage, the, the name comes up. Then the puzzles are actually pretty much decided then since it uses a standard PlayStation RNG which isn't very doesn't have much entropy so it's just pretty much a pattern that you can well it's just an easy pattern. So if basically if you like took note of which puzzles came up you could easily tell which puzzles are coming up. But that's input it's not really practical to do with speedrun because of how fast it goes. But you could do that if you really wanted to. There's also a 30% chance that the puzzle you get will be flipped horizontally. And there's another mistake, I thought I'd put a mark under the wing cube but didn't. So that's why I went there and then ran away from it. But that's no problem. Now on the even number stages of this game, apart from two, 
only have two puzzles per wave, and they're even num the odd numbered. Ugh. The even numbered stages have two puzzles per wave, and the odd numbered stages have three puzzles per wave, except for stage two, which only has which has three, and the final stage, stage nine, basically, although it's called final, that only has one. So that is, there's a total of 88 puzzles in the game that you have to complete to get to the end. And yeah, there's more black cubes on. The also the odd, the even numbered stages also have the most slack space. So stage six here, even after I ignored the first puzzle in the third wave, I've got six rows to play with. So that's why it, you, I play fast and loose with the puzzles on here. Um, yeah, so if you've played Intelligent Cube, you're probably noticing that this is going by quite a lot faster than you've probably played it at. Because this is played on level 4, and if you play it, if you just don't change any of the difficult settings, it plays on level 0. And on level 4, you have a. Well, the puzzles take 20. So I did have it, I did have my notes open, I seem to have lost them. Yeah, I haven't got, I haven't got it open actually. So yeah, the puzzles take, I think it's 25 for it, or these puzzles here, they're killer. I'm glad I didn't get one of these in a run. I call these corridor puzzles, where there's black cubes like in from both sides that they're really hard to deal with because you have to let the puzzles roll twice to capture one cube in the middle sections of them and they're really not very nice. So I'm glad they came on the fourth wave where I could just completely ignore them. So yeah, what was I talking about? Uh, I can't remember what I was talking about. Oh yeah, the... No. I can't remember what it's talking about. Anyway, okay, what am I about? Oh, accelerating, yeah, the speed of them. So, yeah, the, basically the thing takes... On level 4, it takes 20 odd frames for the cubes to advance, and there's a pause of another 20 odd frames in between. But this is played on level 4, it's played on level 4 with the accelerate button held down. So basically, and we have... Four frames the cubes take to roll to the next stage, and there's a six frame delay in between rolls, so that's why this is looking quite faster than you may be used to if you played it, because we're just holding down accelerate for the entire run. Except there's, I think it's coming up on one of the next waves. I just let go of accelerate because I get unintentionally squashed, and then we'll see the true level four speed. So yeah, level four is the only one where you get the cutscene at the end if you've if you finish the game. So if you played on level zero or anything, you got to the end of the game and he just descends on the cube at the end and you're like, what a stupid ending. But yeah, if you get if you play on level four then you get an actual cutscene which explains kind of what's been happening. But we'll save that for when we get there. So yeah, on stage seven what i what you'd want to do is not get squashed, basically, even though I did on the first puzzle of the first wave. Because stage seven has the least slack space, it has the hardest puzzles, it has it has the longest puzzles, and yeah, so you basically don't want to get squashed because the slack space is one row. And if you don't sack the third puzzle, if you don't sacrifice that and get run over on the first puzzle of the third wave, then you have nine instead of one. So that's why I won't be sacrificing that because, and I've also been squashed as well, so I'm kind of down on rows, so that's why I'm getting these perfect. So yeah, here we go now. These are the 7x8 puzzles coming up, and this has the hardest puzzle in the game at 25 turns. Oh, yeah, even, yeah, I'm missing that. Far. In the top right corner, top right hand corner, you'll see there's like a fraction thing. The bottom number is the number of turns the devs have, say you can pretty much do the puzzle in, and the top number is how many turns you've taken. So yeah, the hardest num the hardest puzzle is 25 turns, I think it is. And the average for these puzzles is about 18. So basically, if on this, the game can completely screw you over on this stage because you can get puzzles which require 25 turns to do when you've only got like eight rows behind you at the start of a wave. So the game can sort of screw you over even if you're just playing casually rather than in the speedrun. And in the speedrun, it's doubly dangerous because you're still just letting cubes go by like that. So yeah, you notice now I've I'm stopped letting like one or two puzzle. One. You notice now I've stopped letting one or two cubes per puzzle go, and it's now like up to like five and six. That's basically because I'm not getting squashed. Now I have more slack space to play with, and if I'm not getting squashed, then I don't. 
I don't have to use it all at once. And this puzzle here, this is why this oh, this was a godsend and another one. Seriously, this run is going to take so much beating simply because of that puzzle there. Since I got rid of all the all the green cubes, I didn't lose as many rows at the end here, and that ended stage seven faster than I'd ever done it. That was a gold by I can't remember how much it is, like twenty, well not twenty seconds, about ten or so seconds, simply just due, due to that puzzle. So yeah, eight has the same size puzzles as s the last two waves of seven, but since on eight you there's only two puzzles per row and you have quite a lot of slack space. I think it's nine. I have my splits up and that's where I have all these notes. Oh yes I do, hang on. Yeah, stage 8, you have 7, and if you don't get squashed on the third wave then you have 16. So that's quite a lot of rows and that's why I play even looser with these cubes and let quite a lot roll off. Even if I make mistakes with it. Oh yeah, that's why I didn't talk I didn't talk about the timing, did I? So there's basically so many timing mistakes because the, the accelerate thing takes four frames, so you have literally four frames every time the cube roll to press X and get your marker down. So that's why I just... and there's another one right there. Did it too early. So yeah, that's why there's a lot of these little mistakes, but none of them are fatal. It's not really that bad. I mean, it's not ideal. And some of them actually save time, as we'll see on the next stage. Some of the mistakes save time, but yeah, it's not... Mm, yeah. I wouldn't, I don't want it to happen, but when it happens it, in this run, it wasn't that bad, so that's alright. And here we are now, 8-3. This is pretty much the, not the last time you can pretty much die, but if you get to here, you should be all set. And yeah, you see me, I am sort of chose the wrong side of the puzzle, so I had to kill a black one to get out. So, what was I going to talk about now? Um, yeah, some of the bugs. So you've seen in some of the squashing, um, when I just hold up and just continue moving into the cubes and it's, it does the again. So it considers me squashed even though it doesn't play the squashing animation. For some reason, if you, if when, before the puzzle, if while well, the puzzle has been alive, you've not pressed the button on the d-pad or you've only pressed up, then you can run into the cubes like this and it counts as a squashing but it doesn't play the squashing animation for some bizarre reason. Oh, another thing you see me doing just there, putting a blue marker underneath um, some inside a bomb's radius. That protects whatever cube is underneath the marker from being affected by the bomb. Now that's pretty much the main game mechanic that's not in the tutorials and I don't know why it's not in the tutorials but it isn't, but it's quite a a useful mechanic and if you're going for speed or score you pretty much need to know that you can do that and how to do it. So yeah, another things I uh no what else was I gonna talk about? Um, oh yeah you've noticed at the end of the stages that uh, it doesn't play if you played this and you got to the end of the stage you'll notice it starts counting up all of the rows to give you your bonus. So basically you can press circle and that completely gets rid of that. There's a timing mistake and this is what I'm on about by the mistake being advantageous. That's usually a good job that didn't happen on the first puzzle of the final stage because that would have been quite fatal since I lose quite a lot of rows. Now final has 14 rows of slack space but it's you don't really want to use it too early on even though there's only one puzzle per thing and there's another timing mistake. Not a timing mistake but since I capture a random cube at the start so to give me thinking time to do the look at the puzzle and then I have to, I happened to capture a green cube and then I didn't want to activate it because it would have captured some black cubes. So yeah if you get to this last puzzle I mean I won't say you're safe because I've died on the last puzzle even though I only had to hold up and run through the cubes and I failed to do that. But yeah if you get here you're pretty much done and now we're just waiting for the cube the cubes to the stage to die and there we go end of the run the clear is when you lose control you can't skip this stage bonus se sequence even though you can skip all the others one thing to mention is I'm playing on the Japanese version rather than any of the other versions and that's about 32 seconds faster because at the end of the stages if you skip the stage bonus or not on the Japanese version if you skip it you go straight into the next stage whereas on the other versions there's a three or four second delay while it plays the sound effect and then goes to the next stage whereas in the Japanese version those happen together it goes to the next stage and plays the sound at the same time so yeah I'm not going to talk through the cutscene but see if you can guess who the narrator is
Something has been observing us, monitoring the simulation that is our behavior. But science has now given us the means to confront that something face to face. Our task is neither to face it down, nor to try to discover its essential nature. Rather, we need only to make an experimental black box of our own, set the appropriate conditions, and start the simulation. And IQ exists for this reason alone. So did that explain the origins of the game to you? Nope, it didn't. It doesn't for me either. So yeah, did you guess who the narrator is? It's actually Barry from Resident Evil. Barry Gijerdin, I think that's how you pronounce it. So yeah, I don't know how they got in touch with him to get him in, especially after his awful voice performance in um, Resident Evil. But yeah, here we go. These are these are the Japanese credits, which are different to the other credits since it's played on a played. F it's they come across a play field like this rather than just scrolling. So the IQ, you might be thinking, wow, you've got, you're have got pretty smart with an IQ of 256. It's a lie. I'm dumb as shit. <laughs> Actually, the IQ is basically a, a calculation done on your st scores per stage. So it changes per stage. So it's 0.06% of the first stage score and 0.055% of the second stage score. And it goes down by 0.0. .0 not five percent per stage and then it just adds up all those percentages and it comes up comes up with a score and that's basically how it goes so yeah my score of 440 odd thousand whatever it was to put it into comparison to a, a just a normal run if you're playing if you're just playing it casually through the game you might get to about a million whereas the highest score that's been well that i can find and that i think exists is my 1.34 million so yeah that's like less than half of the score you'd get normally um so yeah i play on the japanese version and like i said it has the yeah no i don't want to talk about that again i've already said all that um yeah the yeah so basically i'm playing the japanese version the puzzles you get on the puzzles you the game can choose from, they're the same on all the versions, so it doesn't really matter. So there's no difference in... There you go, Barry Gajerda, his name's going up. Or maybe Jerda, I don't know. So yeah, the puzzles pool is the same through all the versions, so this isn't easy or anything, it's just faster. Um, do, 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 do. Um, I'm just trying to look for my notes, see if there's anything else I haven't mentioned. Uh, oh yeah, the speed, I mentioned it takes 4 frames to roll the cubes. Uh, on level 0, if you're playing normally, it takes about 47 frames to roll the cubes, so this is technically 12 times faster, well 11.75 times faster than a normal playthrough, so that's cool. And it's, it doesn't take that much to get used to, really. I mean, if you just play it normally and then you press it the first times, you, you'll get pretty much savaged. But yeah, if you just stick with it, it's just like anything, really. It just takes a bit of getting used to it, and then you can just hold it down, and then off you go. It's just a matter of recognizing the puzzle types. I mean, you have to do the puzzles, obviously, in a efficient manner, but it's not much... You don't really have to consciously think about the puzzles, it's just the pattern of the puzzle. So like I've been I've mentioned there's the corridor type puzzles, there's the zigzag puzzles, then there's the all green puzzles, and they're obviously the best. Oh uh, but yeah, that's that's intelligent cube, and these cube these puzzles And these credits will finish in a minute when it gets to executive producer. So yeah, I've been Ada Blue, this has been Intelligent Cube, and I've rambled on for about twenty five minutes now and I hope some of it's been informative or useful. And I will probably see you soon. I don't know what I'll do next. Probably the sequel, since I don't have the record on that anymore. So, yep, yeah, is proof. I'm playing it on level 4. I just scroll through the other ones for some reason. I don't know. I have the highest IQ, even though I've been speedrunning it. Although that's partially because on levels other than 0, you get a bonus. So, yep, yeah, again, more proof. I'm playing it on level 4. 
and here we go I'll show that I'm using yeah so the cubes look different because I use a different texture because some of them are darker than others and you can't make out the black cubes so yeah thanks for watching I've been Ed Blue this has been Intelligent Cube for the PS1 and that is that see you later guys